Hello boys and girls, and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Uh, a bit of a sure. disclaimer, fir uh, disclaimer first. I'm sick to the bones, and uh, well, I basically dumped my system full of meds <laughs> to be able to do this. So if you have hear some coughing or sneezing or something like that, um, that might very well be me not uh, not having edited that out. So it might happen. Oh, oh. oh, that's a bit of a freeze there. So last time when we left off, we well, we brought Ofra the news of her recently deceased sister, and uh, got a quest for uh, to do for her, uh, which in involved her baby, her unborn son, baby. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, you see that? <coughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> uh, we shall keep that in the back of our minds. Um, Flix Compass, down south, as I gather. So, if I remember correctly, we have seen everything there is to see in this uh, map. I think we had a quest for the windmill owner um, to speak with Swerlak. Was it Swerlak? And basically set him straight. And we also, I think, vision and whispers. Uh, what march? Another mother's plea. Smith shipment against the grain, yes. Okay, so let's see if we can resolve the grain dispute. I think there. Swainer and Gavwen and Breath Brethren. Yes. Uh, hopefully we can resolve this without violence. Greetings! Don't know who you are and don't much care. Keep walking. We're not here to chat with foreigners. Aleph narrows his eyes. Careful! Looks like they're cut from the same cloth as those roadies who attacked me. He wrinkles his nose. <laughs> mm, smells like it too. Okay, so... Uh, I saw you outside of the mill. What was that about? Well, someone fancies themselves a meddler, eh? What's that about? It's about Trumbull thinking he's king of the town on account of he's got the mill to, to his name. The dwarf Joel's quiver with rage. It's about him barely giving us anything for the weed we bring him and then cutting our purses when we need to buy grain. It's about farmers going hungry while some bastard gets rich of the crops. That's what it's fucking about. Now shove off. Um. Okay, so that's his point of view. Uh, Trumbull says you've been threatening his family. Oh, I bet he has. All nobility, that Trumbull. Two big strong kids. Purest soul in all of Gilded Vale. The dwarf sneers. Cowards sending out messages to handle his business? Well, you can go and tell him we haven't had a solid meal in days on account of him, and we can't afford a good drink on account of him, and we won't be bullied by some foreigner on account of him. Oh, um. Darn it. We neither have the resolve nor might to intimidate him, as it would seem. Uh, let's not go the violence road for now. What if I buy you all around? Will you talk to me then? Swainer considered this briefly. He looks to the others. Fair enough. You bring us something to wet our throats, and might be I'll feel up to trading words. Um. Hello. 
I've, I've brought drinks? I... Ah, okay, we got enough beer. Hey, so you have. By the flame, I never thought I'd be so happy for a muck of the Blackhound shit beer. God, that's good. All right, then. You've got my attention. What is it you've got to say that's worth a round of drinks? Mm, oh, let's see. Maybe you could tell me more about what's going on. It's like I said, the miller's in charge of the grain prices. He says they're fair, but I know for a fact that folks like Ofra pay half what we do. The dwarf sighs. And maybe we've been a bit rough with him, but what are we supposed to do? We can't keep paying. We're going to starve, and do you think Trumbull's going to be sorry about it when we do? Um... Look, there's no sense in threatening the miller. You have him up against a wall. Maybe you could ask some of the other villagers for help. Swainer eyes you for a few long moments, drinking deep from his muck. Then he sighs. Ah, you're right. Things go on like they are. We're just going to end up hanging from that tree out there. He looks to his comrades. Tell Trumbull we'll leave him be. Don't know what we do now, with the crops failing. Haven't got another trade to speak of. Think Pasca needs a hand around the inn? Okay, so that was surprisingly easy. Um, what's our money situation? Oh, 500. Uh, yes, I, I'm thinking. Good day, stranger. I'd like to hire some help. Yes, level two adventurer. Accept. Uh, yeah, female rogue, human. Dexterity and perception, resolve and might. Um, elf rogue. Yes, wood elf, pale elf, wood elf. Wood elves. Uh, what the. <laughs> Skeltra folk trace their beginnings far north of present-day Edir and have migrated south throughout the forests of the continent, now covering it all the way south across the equator. They are also believed to have migrated across the sea to Irland Fath, while physiolog physiologically identical to one another, wood elves from Edir are culturally different from those in Irland Fath and consider themselves wholly different groups. Um, distant advantage against any enemy that is more than four meters away, Woodles gain bonuses to accuracy, deflection, and reflex. Oh, that sounds a bit right for a rogue. Uh, rogue. Rogues are vicious killers feared for the brutality of their attacks. They can be found as often in dark back alleys, as the heart of battlefield skirmishes. Though unpredictable and undisciplined, rogues are commonly used as shock troops or as part of surprise assault. Their withering attacks breaking enemy ranks and morale. Rogues tend to congregate in larger numbers in cities where they can be steadily employed as mercenaries or hired muscle. Starting ability, sneak attack, Applies bonus damage to the rogue's range and melee weapons attacks from the target. As any of the following afflictions: blinded, flanked, hobbled, paralyzed, petrified, prone, stuck, stunned, or weakened. Ah, uh, flanked. Okay. Stealth plus one. Mechanics plus two. Yes. Okay. I think that's good. Uh, we give her the crippling strike or the blinding strike. One spent counter, dirty attack that makes the opponent unable to see, inflicts extra damage and blinds the target. I think we got our spell for that. What's this? The rogue attacks his or her enemy's ability to move around efficiently, inflicting extra damage to and hobbling any enemy successfully hit. 
Um, full attack, plus 25% damage, that's nice, and hobbled. Hobbled characters have their dexterity reduced by 2, movement by 1.5, and reflex by 20. Well, let's go for the crippling strike. Okay. Constitution, I think that's, we leave it at 10. Dexterity. Action speed and reflex. Mm, yeah, some. Certainly. Perception. Interrupt, accuracy and reflex. Maybe some. Resolve, concentration, plus deflection, plus will. Intellect, a bit of area effect. Yes. Lots of damage. 16? Maybe 16. Maybe only 15? I like the resolve for deflection. I believe when I first played, uh, perception was giving... Yeah, I think when I first played last year, perception was uh, the other attribute which contributed to, um, to the deflection. And it's always a good thing if you have a lot of deflection, as well as concentration. Okay, so I think that should do it. Constitution 10, yeah. Uh, from Edir. Dead for... It could be a pirate. <laughs> now let's make it from Edir. Next. Dissident. You've made a name for yourself as a troublemaker, disrespect, disrespect for authority and a lack of care regarding the rules are recurring themes in your life, stealth and lore. Drifter, you never quite fit in no matter where you go. Each new town is just a place to rest briefly before moving on to the next. You are more comfortable on the road, traveling the world. Uh, yes, I think so. Drifter, give me plus one stealth and plus one mechanics. I got some... Let's see. There was one particular... Portrait that seemed quite fit. Ooh. That one looks nice. There was something else, though. Yeah, that one. Okay, so... Um, facial hair? Obviously, no. That looks okay. Do -do 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 -do. Hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, that's fancy. Uh, I can't decide. I can't decide. No. No. Maybe? Yeah, let's take that one. Skin... Mm, that one's okay. Primary blackish. Secondary brownish. Or all brownish. You see. Um, okay. That's the appearance. Female oh. mystic. I shall lead us. Face Let's go. Quickly and quietly. Eh? I've got this. Let's go. I like that. 
Okay. Name. Oh, uh, yeah. Boo. Let's call her Oril. Wait. Yeah, okay, it's it's okay. Oral. Yeah. Yay! Hmm. We got a new one. And we can level up instantly. Stealth, definitely some mechanics. Survival maybe one point for now. Uh lore is not needed athletics, however. Stealth, definitely. Another point in mechanics right now. Ah! Mm, let's give her endurance uh, second wind here. Although stealth four, mechanics four, yeah, that's that's good. Okay, uh, talents, backstab. Ooh. Dramatically increases damage done from stealth or invisibility. The rogue may use melee or ranged weapons but must be within two meters of the target. Ah, uh, okay. <coughs> mm. Acolyte's Radiance? What's that? Ah, oh, that's the other skill. Okay, I get it, yes. Uh, so, uh, that's all new here. The Outlander's Frenzy, Novice's Suffering, I believe that's all new, that wasn't there before. Cypher, the character is able to temporarily charm an opponent. Uh, opponent. Yep. Matron's Recovery. I think Backstab is a good idea, but then again, I plan to... Let it be a more or less ranged character. Oh, line offensive. Hunting bow. Arbalest. Pistol blunderbuss. Ooh. We need to keep an eye on that. Marksman, what's that? Plus 5 accuracy against distant enemies. That sounds like a good idea. Two handed style, plus 15% damage. Grants a damage bonus while wielding a two handed melee weapon. No, certainly not. But marksman. Yes, I think marksman for now. For now. Or backstab. 150% melee damage. Done from stealth, or maybe later. I think there is uh, there are abilities later on to get into stealth mid combat. And this backstab ability would be quite good, yes. And it's passive. <sighs> but for now, marksman it is. <coughs> Hmm. I need to. She has two daggers. Let's also give her a bow. Let's see. Oh, we can give her a cape. And a hood. Leather armor. I do think that looks. A bit better. Let's see. Yes. I think that looks okay. Hey there. Yeah? Mm, we go for sleep? Oh, we can... Oh, we can level him up! 
How nice! Lore! Uh, let's give him a bit of athletics and survival just a bit. Stealth, maybe one point. Okay. Level 2 spells, 2 remaining. <clears throat> There's something of a fi Rolling flame. Necrotic lands. Rolling flame creates a rebounding ball of fire, inflicting burn damage upon anyone in its path. <sighs> okay, so it bounces once it hits a target, maybe? Or it hits a wall? Yeah, I think it, uh, it it bounces on walls on a 24 meter path. Ray of fire creates a scorching ray of flame between the caster and the target, inflicting continual burn damage to the target and anyone caught in the ray. Oh, uh, interesting. Infused with vital essence. Infuses the cast of his with vitality, giving them a temporary increase to maximum endurance and health. Also pretty good. Bulwark against the elements. Elemental damage resist resistance. Bewildering spectacle. Haley confused for 6.5 seconds. Uh, maybe... Merciless Gaze, what's that? Caster, plus 15% of hits converted to crits for 58.5 seconds. The caster becomes able to see an enemy's weaknesses and vulnerabilities as though they were physically tangible, increasing the chance of landing a critical hit. Ah, Mirrored Image. Creates duplicates of the caster to distract enemies, granting a high deflection bonus, which is reduced with each hit taken. Mirror images. Miasma of dull magnet. Um, mm. What's that? Concert Houts Corrosive Siphon. Eats away at the target spirit, inflicting corrosive damage and converting that essence into endurance for the caster. Uh, drains 56.5 crowd damage as endurance over 13 seconds. Um, that's a no-brainer, I believe. Okay, we get corrosive siphon. What's that? Combusting wounds. Causes enemy wounds in the area of effect to ignite, inflicting additional burn damage over time each time they are wounded. Uh, 5 burn damage over time when hit for 26 seconds. So every time they get wounded, they also burn for 5 damage. That's also not too shabby. He has more of dual mindedness. Duration ten seconds, burn damage per one second. That's up to one hundred seventy damage. <laughs> On that beam. It only has a range of 5 meters though, which uh, this also has only. Maybe we show Rolling Flame? Necrotic Lance, what's that? Creates a lance of pure necrotic energy causing crow damage instantly and over time. Okay. That's also interesting. Oh, I can't decide. Binding web. Bulwark. Composting wounds. Oh, well, that, that is pretty good, though. Bulwark against the elements. 
15 damage reduction, burn, shock, corrode and freeze for 78 seconds. So whenever we c um, we encounter a another caster, that will be pretty good to have. <laughs> All the mirrored images, plus 25 deflection until hit. Let's do that. Hey there. Okay, let's let's rest and recover some health here. Greetings. Um yeah, the cheap one. Whoa. Uh, okay. Your sleep is restless. Restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety, you open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of gilded veils, gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like mouldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open and they are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and with a gust of rancid air she speaks a word. Watch her. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with new... <coughs> ah, sorry. Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. Um, we sure. shall, shall do that. Okay, now that's a sure. turn of events. Let's head back to the tree and see what this um, dwarven woman is all about. Oh, that's some glowing things. Caldara de Baranci. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tuck of her nose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on surroundings, or there is a tepid warmth to it, and you can feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Um, like with the living people that we had a peek into. Uh, let's see what this is all about and reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded through the, to reach... Uh, ah, sorry! Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman, and when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog 
a body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from its tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear, or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Uh, am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy even. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. Uh, okay, so she's... How are you able to speak to me? You're dead. Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Uh, okay, okay. Um, slow down. I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? Yeah, pretty much something like that. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, no. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! What did you mean, when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. Uh, other difficulties? Okay. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Old Merwald in Kadnua. Uh, I should keep that in mind. I think. Um, I think I survived a bee week. Do you know why that could be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? Um, they certainly are. Yeah, you don't look so good. Um, but what did you mean 
when you said souls break apart over time. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. So, I'm one of these strong souls then, that managed to, well, keep ourselves together through the time and uh, the, well, the process of rebirth? Uh, let's speak about you. Who are you? Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What's an animancer exactly? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turned their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. Yeah, so true. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Mm, yeah, the... Well, the missing control of the research here didn't do you any good, did it? Uh, what happened to you? She lost, a rasping, choked cackle escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now! Such a question! As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling! Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> uh, okay, I like her, even though she's dead. Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her valence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Uh, no, but I think you're about to tell me, right? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. Uh, okay. I think that's it. Uh, let's check. Of course, dear. Uh, no, that's it. Farewell. And, uh, well, have a pleasant death. 
Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Kaldara closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the news, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Erin was granted Crucible of the Soul. Aleph looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you alright? You seem lost just now. Um, I, yeah, I'm a watcher. His arced eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin, and I expect that explains how you survived the Buick, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Um, you're a mage, right? Or something like that? Do you know anything about watches? Only that they are rare, and that they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, <coughs> as you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. What's this, um... Uh, Crucible of the Soul? What was that? Uh, Crucible of the Soul. A 1.7 meter radius. Uh, interrupt. Drains. 11.2 burn damage as endurance. Ooh. The Watcher unravels the vital essence of his or her enemies, gaining endurance in the process. That is nice. Certainly nice. Okay, let's save just a... Uh... 17 and a half. What? The smell of pipe smoke, at once earthy and sweet, winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-colored hair leaning against a mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, it could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. Uh, I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I, I think you oughta. What exactly are you talking about? Well, the people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Uh, okay. Arath frowns. Is that why what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be 19. Don't think I'd put you much higher than 22, 23 tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. Um, what exactly makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? He looks at you a moment, his bro arced. Smirk broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack I took you for a radrick at first. Yeah, yeah oh, I've been out of sorts lately. Of course, we all got our bad days when we stand perfectly still and stare at corpses for a while without blinking. He winks. Um. <laughs> okay. Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. There'd be any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks round here, Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Yeah, well, and... I'm a cipher and a watcher. Okay. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. Um, no offense. Okay, you think you're going to be hanged? The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. The war? Saints war. Only one in my lifetime. Vala decides he's the living incantation of Eothas. Overthrows Red Ceres, marches on Deerwood. So we gave him a Deerwood and Hello. Um what's a Deerwood and Hello? We blew him up. He smiles at this, but 
It is the smile of one recounting a joke for effect rather than enjoyment. And、uh, who is Ethos? God of rebirth and redemption, formerly, anyhow. Maybe they call him something different where you're from.、Um, I had other questions. Why was your hatman hanged? Got involved. Redrick、uh, sent man down here the other day. Said they had it on good authority someone in town was working with Kolsk. Plotting Redrick's overthrow.、Uh, said if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward, so Swithin, that's my hatman, he steps up and says it's him. They took him as it. as it. ah! Again! They took him at his word. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later, if not for plotting against Redrick, then for protecting me. <laughs> what exactly does the town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Vathus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethus. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethus worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Elf glances at you and lowers his voice.、Uh, you can see why I was so eager to leave. Um, anyway, who's Kolksk? Someone who got tired of all the hangings. He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him.、Uh, if you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? He gives a hard smile. Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out. Just haven't figured where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places there, but don't think Waitwin's legacy started with Waitwin. Um. We could travel together, yes. Yes, why not? Um. He's a war veteran, so he certainly has some skills to him, maybe? Where you headed? Uh. Some place ca called Cad Noir. There's an old butcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Something kindles in Eda's eyes, and the vigor of purpose finds its way into his voice. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger, and a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. Um, yeah, sure. That's a fine reason, if I ever heard one. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. Long as you're not the one picking the sights. He tilts his head forward and gives you a pointed look. Uh, let's get going.